welcome to another Match Fishing Monday. We are here at the beautiful Boston Lakes. That's better. In a moment, I've got news about some big matches that took place last week. Um, so I'll be bringing you up to date on what happened there. All the winners, let you know how the matches fished. I just thought I'd bring you along here just to show you Boston Lakes. This has been, this chat's been lovely today. He's hammered me on numbers of fish today. <laughs> this is Boston Lakes. Today has been the second goldenrod feeder qualifier of the year. The first one of the year was last week and that was at Larford Lakes. I couldn't compete in that. I did have a ticket, but as it turned out, I was in the Elsica Super Series final, so I sold my ticket for that. So this has been my first go at it and it's fished very, very hard. You can probably tell by the way that I'm dressed, it's been very cold. As far as I'm concerned, it's been the first real drop in temperature of the winter or of the autumn. This morning when we set off from Sheffield, the temperature gauge was on seven degrees, but once we arrived down here, it was just five degrees and that wind has been absolutely freezing. The wind has just dropped. It's actually been blowing down the center of the lake and we've kind of missed it on this inside. So if we'd been up there, I'm sure it would have been a lot colder in that wind, but it's fished very, very hard. All we had here, Les, we've got Les Moody at the next peg. He's got five skimmers. The next one, the other side of him is Steve Ringer. The last I heard, he's had one F1 about four pound and that's it other than that the only place where we've heard that there's any fish caught has been down there about pegs 13 14 15 16 in that area which can be a great area and i mean to be honest i don't really know what they've caught i've caught some hand size skimmers not many four or five and then i've gone chasing carp you know it was quite clear that whilst it was fishing hard i didn't think we were going to get a, a weight of skimmers we just can't do it on a pole you can do it but at the moment the skimmers are just too small so I've gone chasing carp and straight away I've got an F1 about three pound and then but then next cast I've gone back out again long right out in the middle I've had one on a on a 10 mil all sorts wafter and it's got to be a double figure carp um, it's a big fish so I don't really know how that's going to put me in the section or the zone for those that don't know this is three zones of 20 anglers and the way it's been pegged today has been from peg 12 that's been the first peg which is opposite the green that's been the first peg and then all those 20 in a row have fished against each other then there's been 20 going round on this right and bank the far bank and that bank and then the last set of 20 has been going right down there to the end peg which today has been adam wakelin he's been drawn peg 124 today he's never drawn it in a match he has pleasure fished it and done features i think but he's never drawn it in a match we don't know if he's caught or not but we'll obviously find out so it's been an interesting match. Like I say, I've got two fish for, I don't know what I've got. Depends how big that double, that double figure carp is. I think it's a 10 pounder, but we'll find out. But it's been an interesting, an interesting match, but it's certainly a big sign that winter is definitely here. So I'm gonna wait for the scales coming down. I'll show you the results. And then I will meet you back in the tackle room where I'll be showing you about how some of the big competitions went on last week. I ended up weighing 16 pound odd, so that carp that I got must have been almost 13 pound. That actually got me second in the 10 peg section, but you know, when there are fish like that kicking about, just two of those or three of those can make a massive difference. Mark Elliott on my left, he had a few more fish than me, but he had some smaller skimmers. I think he had an F1. He also lost a carp at the net as well, which was a little bit unfortunate. As it turned out, Steve Ringer had caught four or five more fish from what we actually knew but he tipped back knowing that the section was one two or three pegs to his right with about 27 pounds something like that so he tipped back he said he got about 15 to 16 pounds so he'd caught a couple of carp and a couple of f1s as well i think but it just shows how hard it, it's fished the zone was one down in in the teens with 50 odd pound and this is the full weigh sheet for you just so you can see what won the sections as you can see, some of the sections weren't um, there weren't a mega weight affair, but that's what happens at this time of year on all still waters. Waco didn't make any mistake from that peg. He actually pointed out he's been going to Boston for 13 years, and that's the first time that he's drawn that peg, but full credit to him. Um, he didn't mess it up. He took full advantage of it, and he actually ended up winning the match. So massive congratulations to him and the other two qualifiers. 
I've got a few more tickets left, so I will be trying to get in that final again. So I'll be letting you know how I get on in those. Last week was also the final round of the UK Champs. The UK Champs is fished over four rounds on four different venues, and the final round was also at Boston Lakes as well. And Andy made no mistake by winning his section again. So that was four section wins in the league. Absolute fantastic performance again, Andy. Well done, mate. It's the third time that he's actually won that event and there are only three anglers who have won that event three times. Matrix's Johnny Arthur, Tom Pickering and now Andy. So it was interesting to see that Tommy actually said that he thought that John Arthur would go on and win that competition again at some stage but he also says Andy will go on to win it multiple times because he's just so good at that sort of fishing. So massive well done to Andy and I know that is an event that lots of people love to take part in and it's very prestigious and it's filmed but I just want to say massive well done Andy, superb performance yet again mate, four section wins you can't do better than that. Last week was also the final qualifying match for the Southfield Feeder King competition for those that don't know, it's a £10,000 um, prize to the winner that gets into that big money final. And it was the last one last week at Southfield Reservoir. Lots of you know that the venue has been fishing hard. I couldn't fish the last two qualifiers because I've obviously returned back to work now. So I wasn't there to see it, but Nick Crooks won the match. Massive well done, Nick. But it's good to see that some of the weights were a little bit better. It looks like one or two fish are either returning into Southfield or just kind of switching on. But it's just nice that you know a few of the lads are actually getting a day's fishing now because it has been a difficult um, venue of recent. But that's something that we're seeing in lots and lots of venues. Lots of venues are not fishing too good. But once again, massive congratulations to those qualifiers. Good luck in the final, lads. And last week was also the first ever feeder only festival at the fantastic Tamar Lakes. Tamar Lakes is a venue that was used for the Feeder Masters final last year and it will be used again in the next final when the event can take place again. It looked like a fantastic competition, it was a competition I just wasn't able to get onto due to going back to work and that sort of thing. But Michael Buckwalder dominated. Um, the proceedings from what I hear there were loads of fish to be caught it looks like it was a really technical venue in the sense that there are as it turned out there were roach in the shallow water and skimmers in the deeper areas as well and so when you drew your peg you really had to make your decision um, based on the peg that you would that, that you'd drawn so some lads were targeting roach some lads were targeting skimmers and sometimes you found that you hadn't got both species to have a go for so Everybody said what a fantastic performance Michael Buckwalder put in, so I just want to say massive congratulations to him for winning the festival. Three section wins, but it was an actual weight competition, so these are the kind of weights that you can see now, what, what um, you know, the top five overall placings. And when you consider, you know, they were catching fish this sort of size, it was all very, very busy fishing. So that looks like, hopefully, if it is going to be um, a regular fixture on the calendar, it's certainly something that I'd love to get involved in. But fingers crossed, the event is going to be able to go ahead again next year. Well, that's been a quick roundup on all the big matches that took place last week. If you are a match organiser and you would like to advertise your match or your results, then please feel free to use the comment section below this video so that other viewers can see what matches are also taking place out there. If you don't want to miss out on any of these videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos and extra videos each month, check out Patreon TV just there. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday at 7pm for the next video.